Hi, my name is Neil Patori. I'm going to talk about what I do to record a video on my screen and in my beautiful home studio here. I have a Wacom graphics tablet um, and a pen. Um, when I write on this tablet, it shows up on my screen. I'm recording on OneNote. To, uh, I'm going to record my screen on OneNote and I'm going to do some editing in iMovie and I'll walk you through those steps. So first I'll start with my planning process. I read my lecture notes. I try to figure out what segment of material for my learning objectives would fit in a five minute talk. Sometimes it's just summarizing an area. Sometimes it's teaching a particular skill. Sometimes it's solving a problem. But I try to figure out what will fit in five minutes. And then I prep the recording. So I create a OneNote page this one I called my lecture recording process. I insert any pictures that I want from file. I can copy and paste any text that I want so that I have it available and I don't have to type it or write it while I'm doing the video. So then I maximize the screen and then I do shift command five. Shift command five will create a recording screen. I set this so that the screen size, which you'll see if I um, grab this bottom corner, it tells me the size of the recording. Um, here it says 1140 over 612. I make that 1102 over 620 to match the 16 over 9 ratio, and then I hit record. I wait until it gets to about uh, until it starts to record. Um, I give it a couple of seconds after that so it doesn't cut me off at the beginning of the recording. And then I introduce the topic. I say, uh, my name is Neil Patwari. I'm going to talk about my lecture recording process. And this is my course. And this fits into the overall rules of the course because of X or Y, whatever it is that I need to say to familiarize them with the material that I'm about to present and get them motivated to watch that five minute video. So what I'm gonna say in this segment is that I kind of have four steps. I talked about planning and prepping for recording. Now I'm gonna talk about recording. First tip. I should pause every once in a while. Pause for a second. It doesn't hurt you because you can always remove a pause afterwards. But the pause once in a while helps you later, if you make a mistake, you can go back and fix it. Another tip is to use different colors. Uh, I've got four pen colors here. If I have something really critical, um, I can put in a different color. I can, um, you know, I can underline things that, that are important to me as I'm talking about them. The next point I wanted to mention was that Because of that, what I do is when I'm writing something that will take a few seconds to write, I just stop talking. That way, during my later editing process, I can go back and I can fast forward during the writing. My students can read much faster than I can write. And I can even insert my audio after the fact on top of me writing. There's no reason that I have to do it all at the same time. Oftentimes when I'm trying to do both at the same time, I mess up one or the other. It's uh, something I'd rather not do. So I just stop talking when I'm writing something down that's got a little bit of time at it. One thing that I can do is I can often, I can use Control Z to go backwards in time. And if I wanted to redo something, I can go back quite a few steps on one note just with the undo and then re-record it. Okay, now I load iMovie and I create a new project and I can then import media. I have lots of media from previous lectures so I can take 
For example, the intro from my previous lecture, this is something that's on the WashU website and their communications page on video segments that can be used to introduce WashU videos. And then I upload the video that I've actually created. So on mine, it shows up on my desktop. This one looks like it. I can then paste it in. The critical settings here are this tab, which squeezes everything down in time, uh, makes it more compact. And then this bottom screen shows me where I am in the video. I can do things like make a clip with control B when I hear a pause. And I know that that's the one that I don't want to include or I want to change in some way. Um, here's a segment I can see from the audio here that this is where I'm typing a lot. So I can do something like control B at the beginning, at the end. And then what I do in here is I go to, to detach the audio, to delete it. And then to fast forward it. Fast forward by, let's say, 4x. So okay. students can still read this. Here, I'll show okay, you. So I'm going to say uh... it goes faster. It doesn't have any background noise. That sounds funny. And then and after sure it's I done, here that I can, then use as a I can experience for you. go back to the regular text. I'm hitting the space bar to hit play and clicking the mouse to move the cursor. And when I get the point I want, I can then use control B to split the clip and then delete what I don't want. So I can use this to transition from one point to the next as I need to. And Your tip is to use different colors. Move on. I haven't paid enough attention to this to really make the clips uh, where they need to be. But you can see how that's done. When I'm done, I can use this button to upload to YouTube as long as you're signed into YouTube or to save it to file. Um, that's a good step. I do save it to file. I store it on box so that I don't have to deal with the storage requirements of the video. And then I upload it to YouTube. YouTube is great because your students know how to use it. They don't need to download another app. Um, it does audio captioning. Um, you'll get followers so that you can post your research videos as well and kind of automatically have an audience for them. I like the fact that I can just upload it to YouTube and be done with it. That's all I have to say. Thanks for listening.